What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Gear Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. Today we're talking about the Ryzen 1700X versus the 2700X. I've been able to run all my benchmarks and kind of had a little bit of time with it, so now I get to share my opinion and all the numbers, obviously. But before we go into that, two quick things. If you haven't already entered the giveaway, please do. That is for the RX 588GB that we're giving away on my channel. Um, we got a couple more weeks left in that. For the um, Star Citizen giveaway that um, Citizen Jags is running that I'm sponsoring uh, for the $125 giveaway bundle, uh, that ends at the end of the month. So you've only got about a week left in that. So make sure you enter those if you haven't already. Big thank you to everyone who continues to make my channel a success. Remember, 10,000 subs is our next giveaway goal and we're super close. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was actually a previous video I made about AMD versus Intel, basically AMD beating Intel. Now, obviously I was just sharing my opinion on some linked benchmarks, um, but you know, and honestly, after messing around with this, if, just kind of a quick note, if you were wondering if, in, if it actually beats it, it doesn't, not in terms of gaming anyway. The 8700K is still king. My opinion on that was not to mislead, and obviously I got a lot of feedback from people, and I wanted just to kind of speak out to everybody, understand that I'm always trying to be better, I'm not trying to mislead anybody, I was just sharing my opinion on something that if were, were true, what I thought about it, but obviously um, that ended up being, you know, not accurate. So I do apologize to anyone, please understand, wasn't trying to mislead any of you, I was just kind of sharing my opinion on that information, and so anyway, now that we've gotten out of that way, let's talk about today's video. So um, I, I'm very excited to kind of share what my experience has been. I've had a couple of days to play with it, but before we get into the CPU, let me talk about my favorite thing about the CPU and my least favorite thing about it. That's not even about the CPU. It's about this. The Wraith cooler. This thing is sweet. It's probably the best cooler included with the CPU that I've ever had my hands on. It's surprisingly heavy, which I'm imagining is due to the uh, solid copper um, cooling plate along with the cooling pipes for the CPU block. Um, it's well made, it performs very, very well, but AMD, for the love of God, you made this beautiful CPU cooler and it looks beautiful when it's all lit up. It performs so well and yet we have this janky, stupid mounting system that we've had forever. Why go to all the trouble of making such a great CPU cooler? Like, if you don't mount this thing perfectly, it rattles and makes noise. It's awful. Do you hear this, AMD? You know what the sound of that is? It's my disappointment in you. Spend some R&D money and come up with a better mounting system or use what you already have, for the love of God. Now that I've gotten that out of my chest, we're gonna dive right into benchmarks. Obviously, I know that's what you guys are kind of here to see, and then kind of my closing thoughts. So let's talk about the multi-core improvement. Now, obviously, um, I ran some new tests with my 1700X at stock and overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz with a 3200 kit of RAM. And I think this is probably where you're gonna see the biggest improvement with Ryzen is in the multi-threaded and multi-core performance. At stock settings, the 2700X was able to beat both those scores. Um, not so much, you know, not a huge margin for the 3.8, but given that it's 100 megahertz underclocked, it definitely makes, uh, shows you that in terms of just raw performance, they have definitely improved off the last generation. Now, when we're talking about single core performance, which uh, affected obviously gaming, Intel still reigns, but there was a 30 point improvement um, across the board, which means it's much closer than um, it was before. And obviously it beat out both the scores for previous generation for the 1700X. Now, Ryzen Master has been redone. It looks so much better than it did. The gold and silver star shows you your fastest and second fastest core, but we were only able to get about a 4.15 um, basically boost in speed with XFR because we don't have access to XFR 2.0 or Precision uh, Boost 2.0 because this is not the new chipset. The Wraith and AIO I have would have been more capable of boosting it higher had I had those technologies in the motherboard. All right, guys, so let's talk about the thing most of you probably care about, gaming benchmarks. Now, I left the settings at 1080p for all of these tests um, at the highest possible graphical setting with anti-aliasing either turned off completely or the lowest possible setting that would let me and with RAM overclocked to 3200 megahertz. Now, the reason I did that is that Ryzen benefits directly from faster RAM in a way that Intel doesn't do the way the Xfinity fabric works. And so if you are gonna be buying any Ryzen CPU, I recommend uh, getting the fastest kit of RAM you can and overclocking it, obviously. And I don't believe that anti-aliasing gives you an accurate representation of CPU power as it honestly can lower your FPS quite a bit. And yes, it definitely will make the game look better, but um, again, when we're doing benchmarks, I like to leave it off so we can just kind of see raw CPU performance. 
Um, you'll notice that in the majority of titles, we got anywhere from a 6% to 10% increase in FPS, or uh, you know, roughly 10 to 30 FPS increase across titles. Um, there are a couple of games where there was not um, any increase or nothing dramatic or different, which I believe we were more GPU bottlenecked than anything else. I'm using a 1080 super clocked, um, which is still you know one of the most powerful GPUs out there right now. But if I had a 1080 Ti, I think we would have seen some variation in a few of these titles. Um, you know, in looking through the benchmarks, what I was most impressed with was we were getting a boost speed, um, like I mentioned earlier, of about 4.1 gigahertz. And uh, that's mainly because we're using a B350 board, so it can't take full advantage of the XFR technology um, because that XFR 2.0 and Precision Boost 2.0 would push the CPU far past because during all these tests, again, we stayed, you know, well under our thermal threshold. So I believe if I had the um, X470 chipset, we would have seen a bigger boost. But again, it doesn't matter as I ended up overclocking the CPU after these tests. Um, manually so in terms of XSR and precision boost really didn't make any difference to me now in looking at the thermals um, basically with the CPU you'll notice that the Wraith cooler performs actually really well in terms of its stock settings at 99% uh, CPU usage um, only got up to 74 degrees which was great um, and then 48 with my AIO um, now at a 4.2 gigahertz overclock with uh, 1.35 volts we saw a much bigger um, difference in terms of heat now, um, I actually uh, reapplied the thermal paste because I think my room was a little bit hot, so it might have thrown off a little bit of these tests because I've seen other tests with it staying a little bit lower. So just know that the Wraith cooler is more than capable of cooling the CPUs uh, for most of you guys out there, and you can do some light overclocking with it and be confident that it's going to get the job done. So for overclocking, I wanted to use this video for my stream on Saturday. Basically, um, I was able to get a 4.3 gigahertz overclock and I was able to play games on it, but it was not stable. You'll notice from this recording that when I'm shooting, I'm getting frame stuttering, um, inconsistent FPS. I mean like 30, 40 FPS, it was really bad. And that was at a 1.35 um, volt overclock. But I, and so what I thought was, okay, I'll increase the voltage obviously, but it didn't matter how high the voltages were. It didn't matter if I messed with my RAM timing, which was 3,200 megahertz originally. I was getting tons of instability issues. So apparently 4.3 and above um, for most viewers I've watched is kind of silicon lottery territory so I had to back it down to a 4.2 but just so you guys can see that 4.3 technically ran but it was not stable could have been the motherboard but obviously could often uh, be the silicon lottery as well all right guys I hope you enjoyed all that it was so much fun doing and running the benchmark sorry it took me so long I had a wedding over the weekend so I wasn't able to get right to this but my opinion on the CPU if you're currently on the Ryzen platform like 1600 1600x 1700x while the performance has improved with single core and multi-core, I don't think it's worth your money, honestly. Now, the good news is that you don't have to upgrade your motherboard unless you're trying to take advantage of, again, XFR 2.0 or Precision Boost 2.0. It worked totally fine. I was able to overclock it, no problems, on like one of the jankiest motherboards. And the specific reason I picked this motherboard, even though I have a better motherboard, the an actual um, Asus X370, was because I wanted to test lower end equipment because I think it's more realistic in terms of the actual kind of positive across the board is that if you have like a 1200x or an older gen you know intel cpu and you want to switch platforms or whatever that might be um you have a legitimate reason to do that like if you were going from a 1200 to a 16 or 2600x i should say or 7 uh 2700x you know you have an improvement there and you can buy the new chipset along with it if you want to um the current um gen uh ryzen stuff or last gen i should say now has also gone down in price due to this so if you don't want to buy these new cpus but you still want to get your hands on a better CPU than you have, uh, depending on where you're at, now you can get a better deal. And then if you hate AMD, which is totally fine because I don't fanboy either way, you can buy um, from Intel a little bit cheaper now because they've dropped their prices to stay competitive. So everybody wins in this situation, whether you're an AMD fanboy, an Intel fanboy, we've seen um, improvement in terms of performance and um, you know, it's nice to see some new, uh, basically some new stuff coming out. Now, the rumor being um, that there is going to be an eight core um, uh, Coffee Lake CPU, which I'm super interested to see. But they're also, uh, the rumor mill is that they're holding back the uh, 2800X to compete with that. So I don't know if they're going to release that variant, um, but it's something that we're going to have to look for in the future. But again, guys, if you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down. But get subscribed. We're so close to 10,000. Thank you to my Patreon guys and girls. Thank you to my Twitch subs. 
Thank you to everyone who continues to use my Amazon affiliate link. If you guys want to support me using that link when you buy stuff through Amazon or computer parts, it really makes a difference, guys. It affects the quality of the giveaways and the quality of the channel, but people support me directly through my Patreon and Twitch. I, you know, I love and appreciate all of you guys and girls too. Um, and if you guys have feedback, leave me a comment. If you had different results, I want to hear. I That's the reason why I linked um, some other reviews um, down below so you guys can kind of, because when this thing, I think it's good to see like what everybody's experience is because it varies, it can vary so greatly. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope to see you next time here on Geared Inc.